Hello and welcome to the Business Lab TV. We're here in the Business Ladder secret bunker and let's see what's going under the microscope today. We've got seven rules for top telephone technique. Give your calls your full attention. It can be easy to be a bit slack when answering inbound calls in particular, mainly when you're being interrupted or distracted from something else that's also important, but you must make every effort to switch gears quickly uh, and give the phone your full attention as soon as possible. I mean, I myself, I can remember important calls where my interlocutor was eating, munching on something, speaking to someone else in the background, looking at a computer screen, reading something, hardly listening to me. I mean, how reassured do you think I felt at that point, you know, at the other end of the phone? And how productive do you think those conversations were? At the very least, you know, if you can't give your full attention, then politely say you're busy, arrange a call back, do something like that, for everybody's sake. Answer inbound calls quickly. Again, there can be a perfectly good reason why a person might be a little slow to pick up the phone, uh, in a particular instance, for example, being in the middle of something else that's equally important, or maybe out of reach of your phone. Uh, but as a general rule, don't let the phone ring and ring just because, uh, before answering it, if you can help it. On hearing a ringing phone, and actually in fact church bells too, uh, my own brain instinctively starts counting the rings in quite an annoying way, uh, so I'm pushed to answer quickly to avoid going a bit crazy. But whatever your subconscious brain tells you, uh, in business, it is usually accepted that you should answer uh, phone calls ideally within about three rings. On the flip side, yes, it can also be reasonable to deliberately let it ring at least twice, um, as an abrupt, kind of sudden, uh, immediate pickup can sometimes startle and fluster the other person calling, which you don't want either. Know your phone well. I was in a meeting once where a colleague's new mobile phone uh, just kept ringing and ringing and interrupting us and annoying everyone, and he was forced to confess very sheepishly that he had no idea how to turn it off or even put it on silent. I could see the anger and disdain in the faces of the other parties in the room, and it really didn't help. Don't put yourself in that position, whether it's your mobile or your fixed handset, you know, in either case. Whatever you use, you should know how to use it effectively. Uh, and the very basic foundation is the physicality of that handset. Um, you should know how to use it effectively right down to the options, like putting someone on hold, which happens all the time, or transferring them to another person within the office very smoothly, uh, making sure that the, the line doesn't get cut off. These things frequently come in handy. This will avoid alienating callers, of course, and then ensure that your business calls are smooth and professional at all times, thus putting you in the best position to do business with that particular person. Develop a good telephone routine. To maximize your comfort and fluency uh, on the phone, it's a good idea to develop some maybe landmarks that you follow. For example, a standard professional greeting that's not too long, first of all, and also rolls off the tongue nicely whenever you answer a call is a good thing to have. Maybe also a standard sign-off, thanking the person you're speaking to for calling, uh, for inbound calls, or thanking them for their time, for both inbound and outbound. Part of my own routine is that I almost invariably stand up when I'm talking on the phone, uh, whether it's inbound or outbound. Sometimes I even pace around a little. Uh, the effect makes me feel more comfortable and expansive, uh, rather than sitting down where it tends to kind of get, push your lungs down a bit, uh, put pressure on your diaphragm uh, and compress them which makes you sound less energetic and strong than otherwise. So the essence here is to find out what suits you, what you're comfortable with, what works in your particular working environment, and follow it regularly uh, to ensure you have comfortable and confident phone calls. Think of the other person. It helps to remind yourself that at the other end of the line is a real human being. It's not a robot or a ghost or a disembodied voice. 
It's a person with questions, needs, thoughts, just like you. I wouldn't go as far as imagining what they look like, um, especially impossible if you've never met them before, but being highly aware of them prevents you from making mistakes like switching off a bit, treating calls like a chore, or going through the motions which run the risk of prejudicing the effectiveness of the call itself. Smile. Yes, it sounds cheesy, but smiling is important in business. It makes you feel more confident, and it also makes your voice on the phone sound genuinely positive, which the other person does pick up on. It works almost like a virtuous cycle, where if you make yourself smile, you take on the attributes of cheerfulness and relaxation uh, that that particular facial gesture normally communicates to another person. I've even seen really conscientious employees uh, stick a little post-it note on their desk um, with smile written on it next to the phone uh, to remind themselves before every call uh, until it becomes really second nature. You don't have to do that, of course, but it's a good idea. Plus, because it's merely a phone conversation, uh, the other person can't see you smiling gormlessly uh, all the time unless you're video conferencing. So there really is no downside uh, to this tip. Don't be afraid and give it your best shot. Believe it or not, I've known people who were genuinely afraid of speaking on the phone and unable to do it, simply because it was outside of their normal comfort zone to speak to anyone they didn't already know, whether inbound or outbound. Um, you can imagine the adverse effect this had on trying to do their job on the phone. Um, as bad as this was, uh, with a bit of pushing, a bit of coaching, they learned to overcome this and became effective telephone users. So it goes to show that ability is great, being a natural at doing these things uh, is great, but giving it your best to overcome any discomfort and improve yourself is even better, it's even more rewarding. By throwing yourself into the task with as little fear as possible, you'll gain the experience and find your comfort zone with a little help from your landmarks and routine as discussed earlier, to become a confident and powerful business communicator using this key medium.